Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. A lot of you who watch or follow me know that I'm into health and I love creating healthy gourmet food. Um, so Jamie, what's uh, today's mission is obviously health. So we found this article um, from Nation's Restaurant News and um, it's the title of it is Health Experts Offer Advice to Restaurants. And uh, three health experts, Jamie, what are, what are they saying here? So the three health experts are talking about advice for restaurants to help make them healthier. Because, let's face it, health is a trend. It's a trend. Everybody knows they need to be eating healthy. I mean, it's, 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 no, it's no secret that the healthier you eat, the healthier you are, the less sick you're going to be, the less disease you're going to get. I mean, this is, this, is a, this is something that everybody really kind of knows. It's, it's common. People just choose not to eat healthy. They choose not to eat healthy. They right. know. They know that going to McDonald's isn't the best choice. They know that, you know, eating, eating a, something fresh is better than eating something, you know, that's prepared and frozen. Exactly. So there's three health experts or health leaders who are going to give advice to restaurants in the industry um, on how um, eating right um, is good and how um, and how restaurants are the trend setters and how restaurants have to set the trend to make people want to eat healthy. Exactly. So, which is what we do. Which is what we do. Which we do. I mean, we analyze everything that comes into the restaurant and to make sure that, that it is the best choice. Now, granted, I don't like to use the word this is health food. I like to say this is healthier food. Because let's face it, if you're going to eat a burger, you're going to eat a burger, right? right? How can we get a healthier burger? Now, I personally wouldn't eat a burger because I don't think any burger is really healthy. I mean, yeah, you can get a grass-fed burger versus a grain-fed, hormone-infused, stuff, stuff like that. You can eat white pasta versus whole wheat pasta. So, But a lot of people say, well, avoid wheat because wheat's not good, but whole wheat's healthier than white wheat. So I always use that term healthier. And sometimes when you go out, you have to make the healthier choices. choices. Right. So Elizabeth uh, Pavanka, um, who has a PhD and is an RD and president of the Produce for Better Health Foundation. I like that name. Yes. She says the most important things restaurants can do to improve public health is to continue to increase the use of vegetables. Agreed. Not only will this improve public health, but it will also help restaurants provide the larger portions, but not excess calories desired by guests. So this is a key point she makes because people don't realize as soon as you start adding in eggs, chicken breast, beef, even fish like salmon and things, these are high fat foods. And people think, well, I'm going to eat a lean piece of chicken, right? A chicken breast. It's still 40%, 50% of uh, fat by caloric intake. So it's still a high fat food even though it's less fattening than a piece of fried chicken or dark meat chicken with the skin on. It's still very high fat. So for example, 2% milk, Jamie, which people think, oh, it's 2% fat. Well, the caloric, the whole caloric value of it is 40% fat. So you're drinking 2% milk, but 40% of the calories you're intaking from it are still 40% fat. Now, if you're going to vegetables, vegetables, you can literally eat like, I mean, you can eat a pound of spinach, right? A right. pound of spinach and it's 150 calories. You could never eat that much chicken or that much of anything. It would be, you'd, be, you'd have 20 times more calorie intake. So what she's saying is absolutely correct. Fill up on vegetables, more, more veggies, more fruits and veggies, actually. She's also saying, you know, the more you increase veggies, you need to decrease the use of cheeses, fried foods, fatty meats, which is what you were talking about, decrease yes. the calories. Um, and um, in, in return, restaurants can use less of the expensive proteins and more inexpensive vegetables. Um, you know, I kind of agree with her on that, but I kind of don't because people don't realize how much vegetables cost. I mean, we know because we're restaurant owners, we spend far more on vegetables in this restaurant than we do meat. Yeah. And most restaurants do that. Most good restaurants do that. Vegetables are not cheap, right. especially good vegetables. Now, granted, you go to buy a head of broccoli and a filet mignon at the store, a head of broccoli is always going to be cheaper than filet mignon. So yes, so that's where she's making the point. But on a commercial scale where we buy tons of produce and serve a lot of people, our produce bills more than our beef bill. Absolutely. So she believes that the demand will continue to grow over time um, and that the more restaurants provide, the more people will change their mindset and start thinking that. That's the key thing is if more restaurants just provided this, and restaurants 
a lot of restaurants talk it like oh we're doing this like subway and this and that and all these restaurants with you know fresher food better food and this and that but there's there's still it's still far 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 from what we need to be doing it's still far absolutely so then we have the next uh, and the thing is a lot of people go into these restaurants that are healthy because they're going into it and they'll order something unhealthy right because they're thinking that everything in the right. restaurant's healthy. they'll go to like whole foods because whole foods is oh so great you know and they'll buy potato chips organic potato chips like really like those aren't healthy they'll go to the you know they'll go to the i love the whole foods buffet when we travel jamie we always go to the whole foods buffet because we can make a nice salad we can get some rice we can get you know choose and pick but they always have a section of like fried chicken and mashed potatoes and all this other stuff and people are just there just pegging out on sausage and but eggs. But they got it at Whole Foods. But they got it at Whole Foods so it must be okay. Right. Well, it, no, it's not okay. You still have to make good choices. So the second expert um, on talking about uh, health in restaurants is James Hill. He has a PhD and he's the executive director of the Anschutz Wellness Center at the University of Colorado. So first he says, I think restaurants have recognized that they have a stake in the nation's obesity problem. <laughs> yes, we do. Restaurants do have a stake in it. I, I think, and then he says, I think the forward thinking restaurants are recognizing that more and more people are looking for restaurants to provide healthier options while still offering a great taste. People don't want to go out and spend money um, in restaurants unless they're getting that great taste that they really like. People go out to restaurants for something different than what they're having at home. They do. Now, here's the funny thing, because he says that people want to go out to these restaurants, they want to go eat healthy. Now, Jamie, we talk to a lot of people here, and we know a lot of people in the community, and we have a lot of friends outside of the community, and people always say to us that health is their main concern. But when we turn around, we see them eating at other restaurants that don't care about health at all, that are serving GMOs, that are serving fried foods, that are serving white flour, white sugar, uh, the, the beef is not high quality, it's hormone, it's antibiotic, uh, antibiotic infused, it's farm salmon. And we see these same people that, that will talk it to your face. We want it, we want it, we want it. But then we see them and they have, make no effort to do this. So there's a gap somewhere between them the, having the desire and then not acting upon it. Well, I also think that they don't understand what healthy really is. That's, I think, one I thing think as well. I think a lot of people think that healthy is oh, I'm just going to have a piece of chicken on top of, or in a chimichanga. In a chimichanga, or, in a fried chimichanga, right. or, right, in a white flour burrito with cheese on it. They're not thinking of health in the way that um, they probably should be thinking of health with no dairy or no wheat or no um, Good GMOs high quality grass, no right, right, grass fed beef, corn no high fructose corn syrup. They're just looking at, for instance, the wrap as being a wrap and they're not thinking of what's actually in the wrap in the wrap or they're eating a fried sushi roll right they're not thinking about what or the the rice that has sugar in it from sushi from sushi exactly so they're not thinking of that they're just thinking it's a healthier and it, it is it is very hard sometimes to, hard sometimes it's hard a lot of times to figure out in restaurants what is really healthy and what isn't because chefs have these this unique ability we're taught in in culinary school and all along the industry to take shortcuts and add flavor enhancers and add things like butter. I mean, it's just shocking. When you eat mashed potatoes, sometimes I've worked at places where the goal was to make the mashed potatoes 50% butter. It's just, it's atrocious to even think of putting that on a plate and consuming it. Now that I know what I'm doing, I would never, ever, ever do that. Yeah. Ever do that. But I worked at places throughout my whole career as a young chef that that was our goal, 50% half butter, half potatoes. And the best chefs in the world did this. And it, it is it is restaurants' fault that, that we're like this. Because we've taught the American public how to love these gourmet mashed potatoes, this gourmet fried chicken, or these, these world-class French fries, or whatever it is. We've taught the American public to think this way, and it's a shame. And that's why I'm that's why we do what we do, Jamie, because I'm I'm bucking the trend. We're bucking the trend. I, I I can't stand to see restaurants do this, and I can't stand for to see customers and guests and people just get conned into eating crap. It's, it's disgusting. So James Hill also says we have to work both on the supply and demand side. I believe restaurants can take small steps to make good tasting food healthier. So 
again, it goes back to now, the here's restaurants. The... If the restaurants make the changes, the people are going to make the changes. The guests are going to make the changes. Now, I don't think restaurants are willingly going to do this. I think government has to step in, you know, just like in New York City where they ban trans fats or Bloomberg wanted to get rid of the large sodas. And I'm all for that kind of stuff because people can't make... People, people are going to say, well, let us make our own decisions, right? No, you can't make your own decisions because you failed at it miserably. If you're drinking a big gulp soda, you failed at making a responsible decision. If you look at the science on sugar, the science on corn syrup, the science on everything that goes into that and the companies behind it and what they're doing, these same companies, Jamie, that are promoting all this stuff, that sell this high fructose corn syrup and sell this soda, these are the same companies that go to the American Dietetic Association and give them a million dollars a year to fund them to continuing to educate these people that have PhDs in nutrition, that are ADA credentials, that are now going to teach them, well, corn syrup isn't that bad for you, and sugar's not that bad for you, and this and that is not that bad for you. You need your eggs, and you need your meat, and you need this, and you need that. It's all self-interest money going into these groups. So, honestly, as a consumer, you haven't been taught properly how to make that decision. So you can't make that decision. So when government comes in and says, no more sodas over, over 16 ounces, I think that's great. No Less salt in your food, that's great. Less sugar, um, whatever it is. No trans fats, that's great. The science is there to support not consuming these. In fact, the science is so strong that these are such a detriment to your health that these big companies keep hiding it. So no, you can't make your own decision. And I, I agree with government stepping in and, doing, and making changes. And Jamie, Gourmet food does not, gourmet healthy food or healthy food does not have to be bland tasting. It doesn't have to be. Absolutely. When you think of, when I think of healthy food, I think of vibrant flavors from, from Mexico, lime, ginger, cilantro, um, avocados, uh, fresh fruits, papayas, watermelons, um, mangoes, pineapple. Um, I think of all, tomatoes, cucumbers. I think of all these, of all these lively summer and tropical things and berries and, and there's so many things that you can do and make food healthy without masking it and trying to put all these chemicals and sugar and flavor enhancers in and frying it in white flour. There's just no need for that anymore. There's just no need. We're way beyond that. And chefs who don't think that, that, that it can be done, it can be done. It can totally be done. And we've been doing it for years. Excellent. So now the third expert in this um, article is David L. Katz. He is an MD. MPH, Director of Yale Griffin Pre uh, Prevention Research Center. And he says, while we haven't yet reached a point where we can count on highly nutritious food as a default, we have turned the corner so that the wholesome food is the option. And we've already talked about that a little bit, about how there are better options out there for people. There's better options out there. And he's right. We are turning the corner. We definitely are turning the corner. It's a big corner, though. Um, but I think the more restaurants that take a stance and take a interest in giving their guests better, healthier options, whether it's five or six items on the menu opposed to the whole menu, then at least they're putting in their effort to try to do that. And then the consumer, the guest, is the one who makes the choice whether or not they're going to choose the healthier option or the non-healthy option. And I think that it's really important um, to give them at least those options. You have to give them the options. You really do. So, so. you know, it takes a lot of effort for people to, to eat healthier. So here, here's some of my concerns when we go out to eat, because we like to go out to eat. We like to go to the restaurants. So here's some of my main concerns. Um, I always want to know what kind of fat they're cooking in. And I always want to avoid really all added extra fats in foods. You know, if you're obviously fried foods are just totally out. But, you know, there's no reason to, you know, use all these extra fats because fats add up in your diet really quick. Uh, chemicals, any kind of, you know, convenience product that, that a restaurant may be using, like mayo. Mayo is just a disaster all around between the, the hexane gas um, solvent uh, oils in there. Um, just... It, the trans fats sometimes, the high fructose corn syrup. It's just, it's just really bad news all the way around. So there's certain items that you just want to ask as many questions as possible and find out. You know, if they're just going to steam you some broccoli, maybe lightly saute it, a little garlic, perfectly fine. But if they're going to batter that with tempura and fry it and serve it with some kind of creamy sauce, it's just, it's, it's, it's not good for you. And this is things that we absolutely know. And a chef's not stupid, and, a, and you're not stupid as, as a customer is eating. Try to eat as simple as possible, simple preparations. Um, as much fruits and veggies as possible, as much raw food as possible, not cooked. 
Um, and when things are cooked, just simple preparations. You know, grilling as opposed to cooking in a pan is much healthier for you because there's less fat. So there's a lot of things. Just keep asking questions and keep, uh, keep pushing forward, right? So I would say as a consumer or a guest at a restaurant, ask lots of questions. And if you're a restaurant watching this, give healthier options. Absolutely. Um, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe uh, to my channel, pass it on, share it, and uh, ask me any kind of healthy questions you have. Uh, just uh, pop them on the bottom here in the comment section. Thanks for watching.